This video will cover the nightmare of getting your API keys stolen and equip you with three strategies that you can implement to protect your OpenAI and any other API keys that you may have in your code from these API bandits. At the time of filming this, there has been a string of OpenAI API keys being stolen. And one of the top comments I get in my videos is that I should blur my API keys. I thought it would be useful to cover what you can do to protect your API keys, how to tell if your API keys have been stolen, and exactly what to do if you discover your keys have been compromised. Some of these stolen keys have racked up thousands of dollars on the owner's account. And it's unfortunate because it makes people afraid to build applications and put their code out there. These hackers were found to be bragging on Discord and selling the keys to others for access. Because OpenAI is gatekeeping access to GPT-4 at the moment, the keys with GPT-4 access are particularly valuable. I have a video on how I got access myself that should help your odds in getting approved. So be sure to check that out and don't use stolen API keys. So how are they getting these keys? Well, applications that run code on the client side, like from a browser or an application, will require an API to communicate with an outside server. If the person who wrote the code left their API key, it can be scraped by hackers and exposed. So the first thing to ensure your API keys don't get stolen is to not post them online or make them available to people that you don't want to have access to them. This might seem obvious, but sharing code on GitHub, making YouTube videos, or sending screenshots of code can all expose your API keys. So you wanna be clever and make sure they're not available for anybody online to see. The next thing you can do is actually hide your API keys in a separate file that your code will call upon. This will prevent scrapers or hackers from finding your keys if they gain direct access to your code. Let's do a simple example to show you how to do this. So first, open up a new Google Colab notebook by going to colab.research.google.com and then do file new notebook. And first I'm gonna show you how we were previously calling API keys. So for this example, I'm gonna do pip install OpenAI, import OpenAI. I'm going to link my OpenAI API keys. To do that, you do openai.api underscore key equals, and then double quotations, and paste your API key from OpenAI's account. I have a video on how to find your API keys if you don't know where those are, I'll link it above. So we've been pasting our API key here, and you can see this is very visible now in our code if anybody were to gain access and see this. And then for this example, I'm just gonna paste a simple chat completion from OpenAI's website. It'll basically just call it in a prompt here, use our OpenAI API key, and then spit out a response just to show how this works. So run this and then run the API key, and then we'll run it with this prompt here. So you can see it used our API key that's directly pasted in the code, which is good. That's how we've been doing it. Now I'm gonna show you how you can remove your API key from being visible, but your program can still access it. So first, open the folders and make sure your Google Drive is linked and mounted. So click this Mount Google Drive. It'll ask you to connect to the drive, click Connect. Once that loads, you should see the Google Drive then in your folders here on the left. So now. If you drop this down, I'm gonna actually create a folder then within my Colab notebooks. So I'm gonna right click and go new folder and I'm gonna call it hidden API. Now I'm gonna right click that folder and do new file and I'm gonna call it API underscore key dot TXT. Once you have that, double click the file you just created and then paste just the API key from OpenAI. No quotations, nothing, just the API key itself. Once you've done that, go to file, save and you can close it. Next, we're gonna to need to add a step to pull in the API file now into our code. So if you click into this cell here, it'll select it and then you can do add code and it'll move it right below and then do file underscore path equals and then do single quotations and then right click the file that you just saved with your API key inside and hit copy path and then paste that for file path. Below that, we're gonna do with open parenthesis file underscore path. Then we're gonna do single quotation R single quotation, uh, which is read. And then outside of the parenthesis, we're gonna do as file with a colon, then drop down to the next line and say API underscore key space equals space. And we'll do file dot read parenthesis, open parenthesis dot strip. So this will now label our API key, this variable API underscore key. So now if you go down to openai.api underscore key where you're calling your API key, you can delete your API key from the code and then just type API underscore key. So now let's rerun it and see if it works. Okay, loaded in our API key, run this. And you can see that it pulled in our API key as that variable. And now from our code, we don't directly have our API keys visible in our code here now. The nice thing is if you leave this API underscore key text file in the same location with the same file path, you can actually just copy this entire cell and use it in multiple notebooks of code and it will find the same API key. So you can use your, your same API key in multiple programs if you want. Okay, but what if you start to notice API charges on your account that you don't recognize, or you think maybe you exposed your API key somewhere online? Don't sweat, you can go to OpenAI's website. You can select the plus developers and go to API reference. 
From here, you can click the green API keys to view your API keys. Once you're here, you can find the API key that you think was exposed or that you think has been stolen and click the revoke key. This will say it's going to immediately be disabled and the API you request made using this key will be rejected. This is exactly what you want. So you can hit revoke key and now that API key is dead and anybody that has it, it is useless to them now. Most API providers offer a similar delete function. That's actually what I do for these videos after I post them on YouTube. I admit, I've been showing how to program your API keys directly into your code, and it is bad practice. I wanted to put this out there so that I can start hiding my keys in future tutorials and set a better example. I put access to this example folder in the video description in case you want to try it out. I hope you found this video helpful, and make sure you like and subscribe so you get notified when new videos come out. Thanks!